one, it's Faye here from FayeJohnson.com and I am often asked, or it's been quite a question that's been coming up a lot from people who are interested in shamanism and following the shamanic path is, who do you recommend as a shamanic teacher and where can I go to learn more about shamanism? So I thought I'd do a quick live on this and if anyone's watching, you're very welcome to post any questions in the comments below. So obviously when we're thinking about following a shamanic path, it's usually something that we feel really called to and we feel drawn to. And we're so fortunate these days that we can just think, oh, okay, and type in shamanism into Google and then a host of stuff comes up and we can go down the rabbit hole. So I've just wanted to really go through some very basic pointers to think about, to consider, to feel into when you are considering um, connecting with a shamanic uh, teacher. Okay, so first of all, there's some very practical things which um, the human part of us needs to think about. We need to think about what our budget is, um, the location of things, because we can get very excited and want to jet across the other side of the world to, to study, but if our budget's not gonna allow that, then we're gonna just put unnecessary stress and strain on us, which um, I wouldn't want um, I wouldn't want students of mine to do really. So um, thinking about the, the cost, the location, um, how long this training is, the size of the group that is normally taught. Um, so and not just, just and in terms of duration, you know, how, how is this group meeting? Is the group going to meet online? Is the group going to meet face to face over a weekend? Is the group going to meet several weekends a year? Or is it going to be um, a very short training? So just kind of just feeling into it when you're um, and actually when you're doing your kind of research, this practical research, um, you want to be really turning on those shamanic senses, you want to be feeling into it with all of your receivers. So through the heart, Oh, hello, I can see, hi, Teresa, I can see you watching. Um, so really feeling into it. So obviously you've got this practical side, but what you really want to be allowing, you know, this the shamanic path is a, is a path of direct revelation. So we're really all throughout the journey is we're calling to the spirit world to guide us and show us the way. And so really the first question that we you would I would recommend that you do before you um, connect with the teacher is, you know, ask to be shown, ask to be shown a teacher um, ask for a teacher to come to you and see what happens, see what happens on Facebook, see what happens on social media, see what happens, um, let your let your ears open and hear the whispers and ask, put the question out there to ask to be shown the pathway that um, is best for you to follow. So um, what you need to look at, so obviously the practitioner, the, 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 the teacher, the facilitator, um, what, who have they trained with? What's their training? How long have they been following the path? What called them to shamanism? You want to really um, connect with this person who's going to be holding the space for you while you are, are training and learning and finding your way in the spirit realm. So um, again, it's a question for me always is feeling into that connection and feeling for what um, that means to me. And really what's their style? And we're so lucky these days with uh, the internet. And so look, many people do blogs or videos or um, live streams on social media. So you can really get a sense of what that person's like. And certainly I know what I would do well, actually, I was going to just say <laughs> what I would recommend you do. And I have to say, I didn't do this with my teachers. I definitely am so drawn. Um, and for example, when I met Rocio Alacon, who was one of my, is one of my teachers, a lovely, lovely friend, um, and who I've trained with in Ecuador, I, when I met her, I burst into tears. And I just simply knew, my heart said, yep, I need to go and train with this woman. And it doesn't matter that I need to fly across to Ecuador to do it, that's what calls me. Um, and what I was going to recommend though, is that what you would do normally is you would maybe go and join a day workshop or maybe an online workshop to get a little taster of what that person's energy is like, how that person is able to hold space and call in the spirit world, um, and how that person relates to you and your energy and your and your experience. Um, I have to say, like that is not normally what I do. I tend to really, really allow myself to be guided and put my trust in the universe. So for example, when I trained with Carol Day, who at the time was running the Little Red Drum, um, and now I think it's the Center for Creative Vision, I had never met Carol before. I'd never spoken to her on the telephone. I wrote her a letter. I mean, this is a letter. I wrote her an actual physical letter 
saying that I wanted to do three years of training with her and I'd never met her before in my life but again I was journeying I was asking my spirit world you know guide to show me um, and asking for a teacher to appear and I kind of followed that um, guidance but in a sense the practical side of me would recommend oh no you know connect with them for a little while before you launch into something but you know when we're on this wild journey of shamanism and the shamanic path we um, we jump into it and allow ourselves to be guided and that's when the magic happens so just also thinking about the practitioner and what traditions are they aligned with so um so we could look at native american practitioners um or like a we shall shaman for example um so for example elliot cowan who i've trained with or have certainly uh, done workshops with um, in plant spirit medicine, for example, he is um, he follows that tradition. There's Amazonian shaman, Siberian, African, and then practitioners like myself who are Western, who follow Western shamanic practices. And if you're not really sure what all that means, then go to where you've been guided to go and um, simply ask, um, ask the questions to the sh to the practitioners, ask them what they are. Um, what path they follow, what spirits are they aligned with. So, for example, there'll be some practitioners um, who work with particular, uh, who are aligned with particular spirit guides. So many practitioners, for example, might work with Isis. That's a good example. Um, so Isis is an Egyptian goddess and she might uh, be the dominant sort of teacher for that particular path that that particular shamanic practitioner is following. Um, and also, what's the preference of the practitioner? So for example, for me, my um, I tend to work with um, very kind of middle world and lower worlds as spirit guides, such as um, the plants, uh, the animals, the earth, the elements, and things like that. But if you don't necessarily feel aligned with that, then you might not want to connect with a practitioner who is um, aligning that way. And some practitioners have end up with real specialities like um, like psychopomp work, which is connecting the uh, the spirits who have passed on from this world to to other worlds, and so on. So just really looking in, and there's different styles. There's um, sort of feminine styles of shamanism, the plant shamanism that I've talked about, eco shamanism. So just you know, Celtic shamanism. You know, we 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 what shamanism is because in the Western world, here you know in the UK, we've lost this um, indigenous innate shamanic pathway. So we are gathering it. We are remembering. We're calling to our ancestors, and we are. We're calling out to remember this pathway, and this is why it's coming through in a very creative way these days. It's, it's really sort of opened up, so you will still have people. Oh, hi, Mandy. You can see you listening. I hope this is useful for you. Um, so you will still have people who are following very traditional lineages. Um, so, for example, I mentioned the Wichol shaman. Uh, Elliot Cohen, for example, who is in that tradition. And there will be other Amazonian shaman, for example, people who are born into that. And then they work and they might have an apprenticeship style, for example, that we can follow and we can pick up those practices. But obviously, being a Westerner, I'm never, I'm not from a, a lineage of, of, of people who I can call medicine people or, or, or shaman. So I'm not ever going to be stepping out in the world um, in that capacity. So all I am in my capacity, if you like, as a shamanic practitioner, is I am someone who is using those Western techniques that, that, that are kind of very similar across many different shamanic cultures or um, these, these healing cultures that we find across the world. And I'm, I've been taught those and I'm using those techniques in my practice. And so this brings me on to you sort of considering, well, when, you are, when you're thinking about connecting with shamanism, so the first thing I would do is I would make sure I had some of the basics down. I would, I would make sure I've done a workshop and I would able to understand what it means to uh, journey um, and understand what the shamanic journey is and why I need to do that. And I would also like to work out um, how do I connect with spirit guides? How can I connect with the spirit of the drum? And, um, and, and I would also be thinking about what does it mean to create sacred space and how can I keep myself safe and protected and hold sacred space? 
So for example, people, practitioners like myself might run day, one day workshops or weekend workshops that will introduce you to these core um, basics of shamanism, is the, of Western shamanism, um, these principles that we would follow to keep you in safe practice and to connect you with spirit guides. And you can then go away, once you've grasped these techniques, it's really a question of practice. And as I said before, the, the technique of shamanism is, it's a process of direct revelation. So it's really about you connecting with your spirit guides and creating that relationship for yourself. So you can, you can go to umpteen workshops, but unless you are gonna put the work in yourself, and step up and create these relationship with this with the spirit world then um you know the workshops aren't necessarily going to take you further you need to be uh, actively connecting with spirit asking questions and most importantly integrating the responses and the messages and the guidance that you receive because if we continue to sort of ask the same questions, but yet we don't respond in any fashion, we, we still, you know, even though spirit, it's like pulling an oracle card that says, um, you know, new location, new location, new location, or something like that. And you're like, no, 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 but it's fine. I don't need to move anywhere. I don't need to change my job. Everything's fine. But the spirit world, the connecting with spirit world asks you, it's, it, it shakes you up, it changes you. And the fact that if you feel called to go on a shamanic path, it means yes, you're ready. You want to step up and change. But I'm just sort of throwing this out there because you can go on a weekend or, you know, like for example, I have a shamanic, I think it's called Shamanism Basics is the course I run and it's an online course and it gives you these basic principles of Western shamanism, how to connect, how to journey, how to journey with the drum and ask questions. And really it's a case of practicing these basics and that you can go away, um, you're not suddenly a shamanic practitioner, but you're somebody who is able to use these techniques for direct revelation. Hello Rio. And and, um, and, and, and sort of go on this quest for yourself. Um, but so then I would ask myself, if I'm understanding some of the basics of shamanism and I read some stuff and I watch lots of Sandra Ingerman videos or whatever I've done on the internet and I'm like, you know what, I'm really called on this pathway, I want to get a teacher. I, you know, I'd ask myself, what exactly is it that I want to learn? How, what do I want, to, what do I want to be doing? Because I, I remember when I was doing my training, I'm really fortunate, by the way, I probably, I've been on my shamanic path since, I think it was about 2009, was when I did my first kind of, I did a six weeks introduction to shamanism, and I learned those basics um basics of sh sh the basic shamanic principles of the different worlds spirit guides and so on but it was actually kind of quite strict it was kind of like this is how you do it and there wasn't really any room for maneuver but it really did give me a good foundation and that was so i've had two teachers in england i've had a teacher in scotland i've had a, i have um i've done some workshops with the we shall shaman i've been in the amazon um african shaman maladoma some as well um, probably someone who I've missed out. Oh, in Nova Scotia, of course. Um, so I'm very, very fortunate. I've had a lots of different influences from the traditions that I've worked with and I've seen, but I come to it from a very creative place because it is spirit led, it's spirit guided. Um, so, I, so what you want to be asking yourself is, what do I want to learn? Because after we learn the basics, you're then into that, you're in going into the territory of, well, you know what, I want to practice this. I want to work with these techniques and tools to help others. And this is why you might want to study to become what we call in the West the shamanic practitioner, which means someone who's got the tools, like a Reiki practitioner has got the tools and can go out and help other people. So we, so we can go, we can help other people find uh, their power. We can retrieve soul parts for people. We can work with psychopomp, which is something I mentioned earlier, which is working with souls that have got stuck here on this world and need to transition into the uh, upper world. Um, so there's many different techniques and we can work with um, curse unraveling and hex breaking. And I mean, it goes on and on and on and working with healing the land and so forth. So these are some of the, the techniques that we will come up against. We, we will... Um, 
we will learn about when we start on this shamanic path. And so these are the, some of the uh, questions you want to be asking when you find a practitioner. You want to be asking them, well, what are they going to teach me and how is this going to be useful for me? And what I've really appreciated in my uh, training over many years is, like I said, it started off being very quite strict in terms of this is how you journey, you know, uh, listen to a drum and get to these different worlds. And then um, actually following my training with Carol Day, um, and that has actually turned out to be something much more open and fluid and visionary and creative. And that is actually suits me very well. You'll get other training schools who might be aligned, like I say, with a particular type of shamanism, um, where they might connect with certain spirit guides, or they might work with certain different tools, and it might be much more regulated and structured. So, um, and and also like the way it is, I mean, and also really I think the, the key thing for choosing training and teaching is integrity, because this is, it's beautiful, it's magical, it's wonderful stuff, connecting with the spirit world. So you really, really want to be standing in your authority and connecting with the integrity of what is this, practitioner how is this practitioner holding themselves um what am i being encouraged to do how safe do i feel in this space and um you know and also think about the depth of training that you're going to get in a two-day weekend compared to the depth of training that you might get in a two-year course it's completely different i'm not saying one is better than the other but i'm saying it will be on a different level and obviously when we go down this pathway we start to change so um, just be, you know, be aware of that. What, the level that you kind of aim at will be, in a sense, related to the level and the depth that you end up changing and, and stepping really into your power. So for me, the shamanic path is really all about us reclaiming our power. And so what you don't want, what you want to avoid is a very, is what I call, you know, um, <laughs> uh, that sort of celebrity shamanism that's really driven by ego. Um, and or so just just watch out for that, you know, put your radar out there that you that's not really what you're looking for. Um, and just be aware of that and just be aware of um, the lots of different dynamics that play out and also be aware of the, the dramas that play out for you and your style of learning, um, you might be someone, I mean, I'm, my style of learning, I'm like such a good girl, I want to like, oh, I want to do it all right, and, and perfectly, um, and then obviously shamanism isn't like that, it's, it's fluid, it's, it's expansive, and super, super creative, um, so being with, what I've really appreciated about all of my teachers is that they are very um, compassionate, and sympathetic or empathetic really and that's what you're looking for you're looking for a practitioner who um is is professional who is able to hold that boundary and hold the edges and hold everybody who will be training with you because remember we all bring our stuff to this and it's deep work when we start connecting with spirit and we start doing you know the techniques like soul retrieval or power retrieval it can get icky it can feel and we all bring our personal dramas to the workshops so you want to be able to be really trusting to create a very strong and powerful space for you to work in so you just want to feel comfortable and some practitioners might offer an apprenticeship some might offer a year of training um, some might offer a, a series where you can sort of dip in and dip out of workshops um, as you feel ready um, so I think it's really nice to have some kind of um, gentle fluidity that holds you and not too structured because we just don't know, no, no matter how much we're called to this path and we're really keen and enthusiastic, life happens and shifts happen and we, and we can't sometimes really predict the outcome of what, what all of this wonderfulness is going to um, ping up for us. So just um, working with uh, practitioners and teachers who you know and you feel confident will be able to facilitate that for you. Um, anyway, I'm saying hello to lots of you because I can see some of you there. Um, um, what else did I want to share? Let me just see. I, I, try, I tried to make a few, a few notes, but so I didn't want to get to on but to, off tangent here. So I think the key thing for you to tune into if you're looking for a teacher is to think, really ask, 
you know, what, what am I drawn to? What's drawing me? Shamanism is such a sort of magical, it's a bit of a buzzword. It's got a bit trendy at the moment. So, so what is it? What is there for me to learn here? And I would really ask to be guided. I would connect. And if you're not, you know, if you're not used to the concept of journeying, if you don't really understand what shamanism is, but you just feel that longing, or what um, sort of something drawing you, well, definitely start start at the basics. Get a, get a nice uh, day workshop or a workshop or, or like I said, my online course teaching you that those basic foundations, those principles of what it means to step into that shamanic. Um, that shamanic space and yes I'd recommend any of Sandra Ingerman's books for example because she really is brilliant at those fundamentals of what we call Western shamanism but ask to be guided you know go for an intuitive walk in nature holding in your heart this intention to be guided and put it out there to the universe ask to be guided you know what is this pathway what is it that intrigues me about this pathway what is there for me to learn here um, and go down that rabbit hole and keep asking and asking to be shown because um, the natural world and the, the universe around us, and like I said, social media is a wonder for being, uh, for answering those questions of show me, um, show me what there is for me to learn. And, and I think um, you'll find that things will reveal themselves to you. And again, always feeling your way. There are those practical things to to think about, which I talked about at the beginning. But the most important thing is to feel your way and feel if it feels right. But also something really important to remember is that we never, you know, trust in yourself and your ability, you are the authority, and know that you never ever make the wrong decision. Every decision that you've made so far in your life even if you're holding judgment about it, it was wrong, I shouldn't have done that, what an idiot I was, God, I'm, duh. I mean, I always like say to myself, I am such a slow learner. Um, but never mind, you know, every decision you make will be the right decision. So the teacher that you choose, the path that you choose is going to be the right teacher for you because it will bring you further into alignment with who you are. And we are, remember, we only get the lessons and the teachings that we are ready for. So um, that is, oh, I can see lots of fun little thingies popping up. That's like a little firework display. It's really cute. Anyway, so yeah, we only get the stuff that we're ready for. So some people, you know, ask around. Some friends will say, oh, yeah, I've had this amazing experience with this certain teacher doing this certain stuff. And remember, it was all about the space they were in, the other people that were in the workshop, everything that was going on for them, what they were ready to receive and and to and to take in. Because we we are, you know, not to use not to overuse that onion analogy, but we are in which we're layers and layers of stuff and conditioning and drama that have just stopped our light from shining. And each course that you do, each teacher that you um, go to will help you give you the tools to pull away very gently or could be in a very dramatic fashion a big reveal of lots of the layers that have been stopping you from shining your light and walking in the light and being the light that you are so um, you'll never make the wrong decision you will make decisions and you'll choose teachers that will challenge you that will trigger you um, but um, but you know they will teach you and even if we you know sometimes we make a decision and we go to a workshop or we do a training and we think god that was a waste of money um, or god I was so triggered by that I felt really unsafe well you know that is a huge learning so that next time you're not going to make um, a, a decision like that and you're going to start listening a bit more to the guidance that is within you because really this is what the shamanic path is all about and it's for me anyway it is just becoming more and more into alignment with the essence of who I am and the power this amazingness this light of being that I really am so anyway I hope that has been helpful and thank you for watching those of you who are watching um, big kisses lots of love from me and the sea which is there and my plants which are over there okay bye everybody bye